Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Control. Last time we did a dope side quest that expanded our understanding of this universe. And we finally found Dylan, who expanded our understanding of his dreams. He told us about a lot of his dreams, but we've recovered from that now and we're moving on. <laughs> Uh, we're moving on to further investigate the FBC's prime candidate program, of which he was a part. He was P6. And... Ah, you're... Damn it. I started floating down, and it messed my aim up. This is the one that I want. Actually, I think I did clip him as I was falling. Because it's kind of fruitless to be fighting them uh, while they're getting healed. All of these enemies in this arena have a shield. Oh, that was not great. And trying to do that in mid-air proves to be a pain in the ass because it takes about as long to charge that shot up as it does to uh, before you start falling. This is quite nice, though. Nice way of getting high ground. <laughs> Holy hell. I just tanked that. Never again, though. I hear the music. There, I think there's someone right up there. Nope. Where is he? Ah, ooh! Thankfully, these pillars have RPG-absorbing properties. Uh, now with that new level 6 key card that we got, I believe, from Dylan, we can get into heat. Hello. Hello, friend. It knocked him out as it was floating over to me, which is wonderful. There it is. Oh, wait, we can't. Oh, that sucks. The prompt to uh, activate tracking of the side quest overrides opening the collectible. P6 we know to be Dylan, and P7 you can probably make some pretty good assumptions or inferences about who that is. Oh, hello. There's just another friend waiting. And we've upgraded our launch so heavily at this point that even the shielded enemies, uh, the standard ones at least, will get one-shotted by that. Uh, we have the flying splody friends who are not a big deal at all we can just activate their explosives while we're right underneath and then dash away uh the problem here is one the cluster who is conveniently right here for us come on who i got a little ugly uh the other problem that we have is the floating dude in the wheelchair We needed to take that cluster out before tackling him uh, because he's a little bit beefier than your standard enemy. My aim is definitely way off today. Oop. Dashed into the wall, and I'm not sure if I took that full hit. Switch over and finish him. And there are still more of them spawning in. Oh, he's going to be the issue. Okay, let's deal with that. Ooh. It's like he led his shot there. He already had the... This got messy all of a sudden. He had the shot primed and flying out before I was done crossing the threshold of that pillar. He was already firing before he had line of sight. <laughs> he was ready for it. 
His body went up like a glorious garbage fire. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we can appreciate the architecture here. I love this off-kilter hallway that bends inwards. I want to see an OSHA inspector's take on this. Let Brian David Gilbert do another Unraveled about OSHA, but have it be control-themed. That would be really fun. It would also be pretty apropos for this game, uh, given the flavor of all the menus and uh, the juxtaposition that we've been talking about between the strange and the paranormal and uh, how ordinary this all is. Another Alan Wake memo. An OSHA report that just seems to ignore the elephant in the room would be really par for the course. You know, the, the infinitely twisting hallway flooded with blinding light and the chittering incantations of the possessed isn't up to code. That's the problem here, you know? Not enough hard hats. The guardrails are, uh, they're bolted in with <laughs> three and a half inch screws instead of four inch ones. Ignore the, the fridge that ate the man. That's a real violation. That's a safety hazard. <laughs> but that really just does fit the tone of what's going on here. How bureaucratic the FBC is. And how uncanny that is juxtaposed next to the if subject the matter. Dylan wanted me to see. It doesn't matter. We need to find that projector. And there we go. They were indeed monitoring Jesse as Prime Candidate 7. And we get that P7 outfit. All the times I felt paranoid. I was right. The Bureau could have given me the answers, but they just stood by and watched me. And another, oh no, this is them tracking her whereabouts for a while now. For a few months at the bare minimum. We used to play there all the time. Me and Dylan, and other kids as well. We loved it. This time, I remember was different. We found a way in, deeper into it, like it had shifted. We went inside and that's where we found the slide projector. A dump is a place for lost things, things that have been thrown away. Did you ever feel that way when you were growing up, Jesse? What? No. Yes, but that has nothing to do with- Was there a slide projector at your home when you were small? No. Those were before your time, I suppose. But your family did look at photos together, maybe. In one form or the other? Maybe. Hmm. When was this? Can you remember? At parties? Barbecues? How did it make you feel? Did your parents ever show pictures that embarrassed you? Was alcohol ever involved at these parties? Did your parents drink? Did that make you uncomfortable? No! That's just stupid! Come on! That has nothing to do with this. Nothing! The slide projector, let me ask you this. As a child, did you ever fantasize about worlds inside pictures? Inside a painting? You know. Stepping into a painting, into a hidden world, escaping and finding adventure there, away from your parents. I don't... I... I don't think so. I don't remember. Maybe. I don't know. Funny thing about that tape is, that is kind of how this all started. She stepped through a door, where a painting hung one moment, and then was gone the next. 
not exactly stepping through a painting, but the parallel they're drawing is pretty clear there. I studied what happened in ordinary here. That's the place to start looking. And now Jesse feeling kind of at home in the bureau and this being this feeling kind of normal and right to her. This reframes things, doesn't it? I just want to deal with this first before we finish that thought. This is a coping mechanism for Jesse. This is her escapism, much like playing it is for a lot of players. A lot of players who are processing a lot of emotional baggage and a lot of trauma. She stepped into a world that, oh God, <laughs> a world that, uh, by our standards, is a fantasy land to escape. Pyramids. Very different one, sure, but both in a cell of some sort. Am I out of the cell now, or is all this, the house and being the director, just another cell? He's really in charge. And this is kind of a new development in how she's processing a lot of her baggage. Oh, I love when that happens. It's happened at least twice this episode. It's so good. <laughs> it's one of the many things that makes telekinesis so fun. Oh, that was a nice clean hit. I think we're going to be switching back to the shotgun pretty soon. Uh, I think I'm going to be upgrading that, adding a new personal mod to it, and then uh, getting some more mileage out of it since it's been a minute. I don't think I'll be uh, going back to spin too often. Not my favorite alternate form uh, for the service weapon. And we should also be able to slip into that P7 uh, candidate outfit. from the control point. We're going back home. Of course we are. It started there and it's Nope. Never gone away. Okay, there we go. Uh nope, can't upgrade or create the others. So, shatter. Let's get that damage boost and I think that also comes with a stability upgrade uh, but also the personal mo or the uh, the weapon mod slot yeah we have spin we have our grip pierce and shatter low health boost could kind of be useful considering I've been playing a little sloppy especially today but man, those extra five projectiles, it's just a multiplier on the damage. It's a coefficient. Those types of upgrades for shotguns and games are always, always, always worth it. Oh, I had a clear shot lined up. I really should not have gone for the telekinesis, especially against these enemies. Oh, well. You, friend, are annoying. Okay, so down on the ground floor, the thing that you have to watch out for is that there is one of those, uh... Ooh, God. What do they call it? The fugues. Uh, we have to destroy some of this mold because we're not going to be... Uh-oh, uh-oh. We can make this. We can do this. Oh, no! Just as I was saying, the brain cloud snuck up behind me. Uh, so anyway, we have to destroy 
those uh, mold growths so that the turntable can spin. Let us try this again. Ooh, can I get that before he gets the shot off? Yes, good. Alright, that's quite alright. Now we can deal with these safely from the turntable floor. Instead of uh, trying to fight enemies and destroy the spores. All while a brain cloud hunts us down. We're going to end up close to it, but we're pretty healthy this time. Uh, this is locked. The door is not here. Here. Oh, wait. Do I have to go back down to the first floor? I cannot remember. It's looking like it. Yeah. I just want to make sure I bait the brain cloud a little bit so it's not right underneath me as I land. Uh, up, 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 up. There's gotta be a way to rotate these tracks. Maybe there's a control panel nearby. Oh yeah, the delivery of teeth. It's like me cleaning my dad's truck out. <laughs> no context needed for that. Or that, uh, oh, which episode is it? It's like episode four or five of Magnus. With the waste disposal guy. Oh, you thought I was done talking about the Magnus archives? I've been further emboldened by uh, a close friend getting into Mag. Also, if you're watching, hi, Lizard. Oh, you are not supposed to be able to get that attack off. <laughs> I'm shitting the whole entire bed this episode. Now we have to get creative. The shame of this is this is an ambush I remembered. I think my telekinesis just got blocked by a stray cabinet. Which is just tragic. We're good though. We're fine. We just need to find some batteries. So in the meantime, uh, Carlo Zerpa has been making some SCP recommendations based on the episode. Uh, for each episode that's gone up. And they've really just been going above and beyond. And I always dig the comments. But especially these themed ones. There's always, like in every LP recurring themed comments and they're always so good like epics uh episode by episode norse mythology ones and god of war people keeping running counts of things zerpa's scp suggestions based on the episode it's just always amazing everyone making observations and catching little details too even like years later I still occasionally get stuff uh, pointed out to me in the Demon Souls LP comments that like, oh, I never knew this about Demon Souls. That's so cool. Actually, on the topic of observations, uh, that LP has been getting plenty of good comments too, worth calling attention to, uh, including one confirming that the storm of the, I think the North Pole on Saturn in the game Shit is a real phenomenon. 
It's an actual 24-7 raging storm on Saturn above the pole. Wait. Uh, Saturn. So what is one Saturnian day and one Saturnian year? Because that shouldn't be 24-7. <laughs> uh, anyway, a commenter pointed that out. And also how just like in game, the polar storm also functions as this amazing climatological astral landmark. And it changes colors and it's actually shaped like a hexagon. Like it's actually hexagonal. I would not have found that out otherwise. So doing that LP has been educational for me and provided a good tangential learning opportunity. And I love that. I would usually shout that out in the uh, in the relevant LP, but since the observation LP has been recorded already, I haven't had the chance to do that, so this is just a crossover episode. Yeah, I've been uh, falling for a lot of dumb ambushes, but not today. Not that one. <laughs> The house designation. Hmm. You're listening to America over the last 29 years, shining a light in the shadows. What am I about to tell you? They found out. I don't know what would happen. If who found out, brother? The men in the suits. They told me it was like industrialized. But this is something else. Something nobody talks about. Ordinary. This certainly doesn't sound very ordinary, Colin. No, not ordinary. Ordinary. It's a town. And it wasn't an industrial accident. I mean, that's what they said. But that's bullshit. Whoa, please watch the language, Colin. It may be 2 a.m., but we're still a family show. I'm sorry. It's just my brother was there. They said the town was destroyed, but it wasn't. I went there. The people are gone, but the town's there. It's still there. So the population of an entire town disappears, yet the town remains. Tell me, was the phrase "there is no salvation" written anywhere? I'm. I'm not sure. The same thing happened in Brazil in '23, a village called Fort Verde. More than 600 people just up and left. The government said they were fleeing guerrilla forces, but we know the truth. A mass abduction, as predicted by my regular guest, Dr. Quincy Logan. Abduction? You mean aliens? That's bullshit! I know they're lying! Now I warned you about the language, caller. I'm afraid we're gonna have to cut you off. And good timing, too. It's time for a short break. Hang in there. America Overnight will be right back. They got Limetowned, and I think we might talk more about Limetown next time. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one.